Welcome everybody. Um, as you all know, I am Caitlin, the Marketing Director here at Travel Stories GPS. And we just wanted to push this out to our clients um, with the busy season coming up and a lot of people taking road trips and exploring around the states. Um, so we want to help you uh, just make sure that you can market your tour um, and have all those resources needed because although your tours may have launched, we are so here to help you year round with marketing. Let me also have Christy here. Uh, I think I've talked to all of you, but production director, so I help everybody to actually build tours. If you don't know who I am, then um, you probably haven't built a tour yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then uh, we wanted to also introduce Carl, which is our main attraction here today. Uh, <laughs> we're, the main, the main meat of this uh, client webinar today will be uh, a Q and A with Carl because we're from County, the county that um, he is with, has done a really fantastic job of marketing their tour, and so we wanted to share the kinds of things that they have done, the kinds of creative things that they have done, so it may help others. So you can see by the agenda, we're just in our introductions, we're gonna talk about why is summer marketing so important. Um, Kate's gonna do a little review of uh, marketing resources that we offer, mm -hmm. and then we'll do the fun part, which will be the, the Q&A with Carl, um, and we'll follow up with some marketing materials and campaign information for you. So with that said, I just wanted to start a little bit with some analytics. So analytics are helpful because they obviously show us trends about usage and um, let us know when are important times to market and when are, you know, less busy times. Um, <laughs> so you can create another tour. Yeah. Not <laughs> exactly. Um, but they, they provide us really key, anything that shows you how your app is being used is gonna help you to market your tour more effectively. This is just a really fun statistic that I wanted to start with. Um, our app usage has really gone through the roof this year. Uh, we have seen a 200% increase in users um, in the last, in, in 2018. You can see that this orange line, um, that, I mean in 2019, I'm sorry, excuse me. And this orange line here is- Are you sharing something? I don't, I don't see an orange line. Where should oh, I be? Oh, sorry, let's oh. share our screen with you. That would be helpful. <clears throat> Thank you for interrupting and letting us know that you're not seeing that. Uh, no problem. There we go. Yay. Yay, okay, <laughs> great. Thanks for that. Um, so you can see here that 2018 is this orange line. So in 2019 is this blue line. So we're clearly doing uh, much better in, in terms of users. Uh, like I said, 200% increase in 2019 so far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's exciting. This is something I wanted to, and it's probably due to the increase in the amount of tours that we have, just more marketing that we're doing on our end and more marketing that our clients are doing. Um, and then I wanted to show you some information about what are our most popular seasons. Um, summertime, that's the answer. Uh, you can see trends over the years that we get a bump in usage in 2017 about started in about april and uh through october 2018 we kind of got that bump a little bit later but we did we did start to see a bump in june july august september and then the same thing is happening in 2019 this is a slightly different scale um mm -hmm. but we had we're starting to get that that bump you know in uh, may March. June. Yeah, we got a big bump in March. Um, had a couple of tours come out there. So same sort of thing. It's spring and summer when folks are traveling, they're on road trips. Um, in some of the cases of some of our tours, like Yosemite, Natalie, um, you can't even get into uh, some of our tours until the summertime. So summer, of course, is really, really important. Um, that's when people are on the roads and traveling with their families. So, oops. Great, so thanks for going over all that. That's just really exciting, the way that we're trending. Um, and so 
Here with going again into the summer season, Travel Stories is here to help you. Um, whether that's helping with email marketing, physical marketing, digital marketing, um, social media, we have a plethora of resources to help with our clients that doesn't just stop with the tour launch. And so just to review some of the resources that we have, uh, let's see here. So, Marketing materials, uh, we help all of our clients with designing these materials, um, sending off a marketing starter kit that includes rack cards or posters or table tents, um, as well as with some branded travel stories materials. So if our clients have run out of their marketing starter kit materials that we sent them for the launch of their tour, um, we can always do a pricing quote and print out additional materials, or you can always find a local printing company in your area and use the digital files that we send to you um, and print out more of those. And um, another really easy thing to do that sometimes can be looked over is just adding a promotion for your Travel Stories tour on your website, whether that's using the client webinar banner or the client banner that we send to you, um, or you know, I can always send you a few examples of what other clients have done to provide you with additional ideas of how to add that. Um, make sure to reference your tour on um, in newsletters that you send out to community members or people who are part of your organization. Doing employee trainings for incoming employees that come in. Make sure that they know that you have a travel stories tour. Um, you know, have them go out and test the tour, take the tour. Um, you know, if they have any feedback, we'd always love to hear that. And then also, if you have any summer events that are going on, it's always great to do a little Travel Stories plug at that event, whether it's just enticing people to take the tour, um, you know, maybe doing a quick little feature of a story that is in your tour, um, just to kind of get people interested in taking that. And we're also happy to provide any travel stories language, uh, whether that's generic language about the app that you want to reference in a newsletter um, or on social media. We can also provide you with a little snippet of your tour, uh, whether that's a little paragraph. Um, that way you can, again, blast that out to your network. And um, just, you know, you can send me an email, um, hop on a phone call real quick, and we can make sure to send that over to you. And then if you need any tweaks in your marketing materials, so whether that's, you know, the rack cards, posters, table tents, um, we can make little adjust adjustments to the material, and that's just included in your annual subscription. So making sure that you take advantage of all that, all the resources that are included um, with that. And then I'll touch base on this a little bit more um, at the end, but I can provide you with a checklist of marketing your tour in your area, um, whether taking some tips from that checklist or maybe reading through some of those will insight um, different ideas of how you can market best in your area. Um, social media posts, we don't just send those to you for the launch of your tour, but we actually have seasonal social media posts that you can use as templates. And then we also have digital marketing resources that are available, again, year-round. We have some free digital marketing options as well as some paid uh, digital marketing options if, that is, um, if you have space for that in your budget. So then I also have a few great examples of um, marketing to increase tour usage. So this is, you know, kind of the winners of on-site marketing that people have done. So here on the right-hand side, we have Red Mountain Park in Alabama. Uh, this is along a trail route, and um, throughout that trail route, during little, where they have story sites, they've included this little signage piece. Um, you know, just a quick attention grabber piece that has download instructions and where to get the app. 
Up top here we have Lady Bird Johnson. So this is a botanical garden. So on their little signs throughout the garden, they've included, there's a story here, little piece, again, attention grabber, and then has download instructions. And then um, we have Carl's piece here. So Highway of Legends, they were able to get this beautiful billboard put up. Um, and again, this has been super successful. We've had you know users reach out to us via the website, let us know that they saw this billboard, downloaded the app, and then loved the tour. So anything that you can do in your community to get the word out is highly recommended. We see a lot of success through physical marketing and word of mouth. Right, so I think Part of this is how unique each and every tour location is. So mm -hmm. some places it's very possible to put up physical mm -hmm. um, signage at each site, like at a botanical garden. Other places you're going to be thinking more about physical marketing in visitor centers or mm -hmm. potentially billboards. So it's really important to know your audience and to know um, what things might work for you. So with that said, we're going to move into the Q&A and talk a little bit, we're going to talk to Carl about um, what worked in his community and kind of how did they come up with their strategy, what was their strategy, We'll just keep this kind of casual, Carl. So first and foremost, um, can you give us a little uh, overview of your tour and why you decided to, to build a travel stories tour, um, just so we get a sense of what your tour is all about? Sure. So hi, everyone. Our tour is about the Highway of Legends, a scenic byway in Southern Colorado. It's uh, right off of, including part of I-25, uh, about three hours south of Denver, three hours north of Albuquerque. Uh, so the Highway of Legends is one something that our community cares a lot about. It's a great, it's a great drive for people that want to explore the mountains, see different, it goes from the plain to the mountains, and it's just looped with different stories um, from history around the area. So everything from Native Americans and their influence in the region, to mining, to early settlers and cowboys, it all is sort of encapsulated in this Hall of Legends tour. Perfect. And so thank you for that. Um, so, so how, when you, when you were thinking about building this tour and when you're thinking about marketing your tour, who did you have in mind in terms of who would be your audience? And how'd you know that? Some people have trouble with that. Mm -hmm. So we, we figured two things, right? Well, because it's a scenic byway, we know there's a certain group of people that, that go on byway tours. But one our tourism board chair, she had the idea when she visited a, a Civil War battlefield, she could call into a number and listen to the tale of, of the battle. And she said, there's a great way to do this. We have to be able to find a way to do this here because it's so informative and so interesting. So we figured between the natural uh, combination of people that drive byways and like to experience them, locals that you know want think want cool things in our area and things for people to do, uh, as well as tourists, of course, and then the history buffs, like our tourism board chair, that want to find out information about where they're at. So the tour is a great combination of those three things. So we we played a little bit into the heritage tourism and a little bit into the local pride and a lot into explaining to tourists how the geography around them has shaped the people that live there. Mm -hmm. and, and when you were talking to Caitlin about, you know, you, you said, when we were talking about uh, creating your marketing strategy, you, you had a sense of who are your visitors, you know, like exactly where they come from and where, and you know, what states and their ages and how did you come up with that information? Where does that come from? So most of the information came from the Colorado Tourism Office. Mm. Um, the state has done extensive research in the past about where tourists from Colorado come from. And beyond that, just local knowledge, talking to folks, because we're a really small community. Our county is, is less than 7,000 people. Um, we know where tourists come from because we talk to them. Right. So we know that we get a lot of Texans and we watch the license plate. And then after Texas, Denver and the Front Range are next and then after that, you know, the sort of surrounding uh, plains and mountain states are make up most of our tourists just because of one, CTL research, and then two, 
local, local, local paying attention. Right, right. So, right, so strategy number one, reaching out to or knowing who to ask. There are organizations out there that do this kind of marketing research, right. and we don't have to recreate that. So yeah. if there's a place, you know, for Yosemite National Park that has audience um, mm -hmm. demographic information, that is going to really inform how you market your tour. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the same even here in Jackson, you know, we have the Chamber of Commerce that sends out a report each quarter with people who come to visit um, in this area. So I think that's a great resource to use. Um, wonderful. So, you know, kind of having an overview of your tour, knowing your demographics, I think we can start to walk through your marketing process. Um, so a question for you, Carl, is how important were physical materials in your community? So physical materials are really important, particularly the rent cards. Um, we have our own welcome center, but also a lot of our enrolled tours work members, things like that, they have businesses. So they want to be able to tell people about the tour and, and put something in their hand that they can take with them. So we went through a lot of rec cards really quickly and ordered more um, and going to those really quickly because business owners want to talk about what they're to do around here and the tour gives them a great place to point people to. So do you have a sense of where most people found out about the tour? Was it in the local businesses? Was it in your visitor center? Um, when you talk it, to people? It was a good mix. Uh, we've done a lot of digital marketing. Right after we launched the tour, we, did, we redid our website, uh, SpanishCountry.com. And when we redid the website, we made the tour a key focus on that. We've also invested heavily into the Colorado Tourism Office's uh, marketing program. So there are itineraries. We created an itinerary, a three-day itinerary on their website that's like one day is just going around taking the tour and stopping in each town. Um, Things like the billboard came up, um, those opportunities came up we took advantage of, but you know, I would say that the locals, getting the locals involved really helped the biggest amount because once people that were local found out about it, every time they brought family here, every time they encountered someone that looked for something to do, those folks became, you know, walking billboards for us. Basically ambassadors for your tour. Exactly. Right. That's something that Travel Stories does a lot is we actually try to train locals, um, concierges, key folks, ambassadors, like people who are talking to tourists in our town, make sure that they understand how Travel Stories works and keep them trained. It takes a lot of, um, you know, time on Caitlin's part to go out and train those people, but we see a lot of return on that. Yeah. Um, if people don't know, people who are telling visitors um, what to do in the area, if they don't know about this resource, they're not going to obviously mm -hmm. tell the visitors about it. So. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, I would say it does take a lot of time, especially here in Jackson. We have a lot of turnover just with seasonal jobs. Um, but it's great, you know, I'll probably go up three or four times in the summer. And, you know, towards the middle end of the summer, you know, I'll walk in and people will recognize me, know about travel stories, um, restock their materials. And again, with this being a free public resource for people, um, concierges um, and, you know, welcoming uh, um, teams that we have in Jackson are really apt to tell visitors about this. Um, so we've really seen a huge return on investment with that. Mm -hmm. And I think there's one, one key thing that you said, Carl, which is um, that you did a good mix of not just physical uh, marketing, but also digital marketing. We have to keep in mind that this is a mobile platform. And when people find out about it on their phones, it's just one step away to download. Mm -hmm. And so that was a pretty key component of your tour success. Um, uh, so, Caitlin, do you want to talk a little bit about what we did on our end in terms of their digital marketing strategy? Yeah, we can definitely dive into that. So, um, one thing that you can bring up the case study if you want. Okay. Um, one thing that we now offer um, is running and managing digital marketing campaigns. Um, so, you know, we're the ones working with you, we know the ins and outs of your tour. Um, what we can do is create digital marketing campaigns 
Um, it kind of takes the hassle out of um, your end to manage, optimize, find all the keywords for digital marketing campaigns. Um, we kind of do all of that work for you. And um, you can see here as an example, so we have um, two different campaigns that launched for the Highway of Legends uh, tour. So I believe it was maybe a week after we launched the tour that we launched these campaigns on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we have all of these different levels for digital marketing in order to work with your price point. Um, and then we also have very flexible campaign lifespan. So if you only want to do a campaign for, you know, three weeks because that's your peak season, we can do that. Or if you wanted to do it for three months, we can do that and we'll adjust the budget accordingly, make sure that we are optimizing it and having the most reach that we can. Um, so with the Highway of Legends, we had, um, we ran this campaign for four weeks. Um, during that time, we had over 50% of tour downloads come from that Facebook campaign. Um, so what's also great about this is you get all of the data and the analytics. Um, so it's a good way to see, you know, how many people, how many people did this go in front of, and then how many people actually click through and then downloaded um, the Travel Stories app to take the tour. Um, you can also test out, you know, we were talking about demographics earlier, and we ran two audiences. Um, and so the first one was targeting um, geology, and then the second one was targeting road trippers. Um, this way you can see how well these perform in these different audiences. Um, it can also kind of give you some insights where maybe you thought geology was going to work out really well and it was actually road trip groups that worked out um, even better or vice versa. And so that way you can get, again, additional information on your audiences. So in the future, knowing specifically who to market to. Um, and then you can see we got over 31,000 impressions um, during the first four weeks of the campaign. Um, and here you know, we have a little bit of information, again, to entice people, and then we have um, a little call to action to download the app there. So, and I'd just like to reiterate that, that we do digital, when you build a store with us as part of your subscription, you are automatically included in our digital marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. This is something that Werefano opted above and beyond the normal subscription for mm -hmm. digital marketing. We focused a lot of energy on this because um, they had some extra media spend um, to market mm -hmm. their tour. So you are, we do, we do things like include the name of your tour. Yeah. Um, if you want to explain a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. So um, what we do, if, um, right as you're launching the tour, we add in these keywords. And so like you mentioned, it's including your location, your tour name, um, for Lady Bird Johnson, they wanted to include botanical garden and conservation in their keywords as well because that's something they really focus on there. Um, so, you know, I'll kind of go over the typical ones that we have, but again, if you have other keywords that you want to include in there, we are more than happy to do that. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, we have digital marketing resources that are free and paid for. Obviously, going over here, the, this is the paid for that Christy mentioned. Um, so not only including your keywords in our overall digital marketing campaigns that we're doing for travel stories, but we also offer what's called a remarketing pixel tool. This is, again, a free um, resource and what we do is we send you this little HTML code that you can just plug into your website. We have instructions for that and someone that can walk you through those steps if you need. It's not anything difficult to do, but I know sometimes going on the back end of the website can be a little scary. Um, so we can have someone to help you with that. And what that does, I'm sure everyone has seen this before, is when, say, if you're on um, the a website, whether it's, let's give travel stories as just an example. Um, if someone's on the travel stories website and then they go to look up places to eat in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, say if they're on Yelp, 
you'll have a little advertisement that will come up on the side or on the top um, that just talks about, you know, remarkets to these people about travel stories tours in their area that they're looking. Um, and that is a customized ad that we will create for you, for you before we send that out. Um, you've probably seen this with, you know, maybe you're searching for hiking boots and then you go to a different website and you see those hiking boots that you were just looking at on that web page. Um, something that we've included is to not market too many times to people because we don't want to annoy anyone. So we do have a limit on how many times that advertisement will come up just to keep in mind that we want to keep a good impression on these people. We don't want to annoy them too much. <laughs> so. So I really can't uh, stress enough like the importance of the digital marketing because again, one click away to just get to the, to the tour. Um, but in some places, everybody's got a different, like we said, a different market that they're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. And in Carl's case and Werfano's case, they decided that they went really above and beyond and decided to put up a, a billboard, which was the first time we've had a client put up a billboard. So let's talk a little bit about this, Carl. Um, what was the inspiration for this? Why a billboard? Why did you think that would be successful? So that billboard is actually one of two that our county owns. And they've been sitting there for a while. Our local chamber of commerce, we did one, and the tourism board decided you know, to redo the other one. So we worked together to come up with a design that um, you know fits everyone's needs. You can see it has that point off to Levita Kachara, and just to generally promote the tour in a very simple way. So it's something that people can read, can process, and uh, if you have a, a phone, an iPhone, it, it has a phone right there for people to go and download. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Right, and so that's a case of you understanding what you have at your disposal and using it really creatively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So props to you. I mean, not everybody can put up a billboard. It's not possible in all places, right. but there always are creative solutions to marketing. Yeah, like little things. Um, you know, one other thing that I've mentioned to clients is doing chalk art. And so you need to double check with your town that this is okay, but this is a super cheap, easy way to get people's attention where you bring out some chalk, maybe, you know, getting some, High school kids or even your children to go out and on the sidewalks write, you know, travel stories tour, learn about the history in this area, you know, download the travel stories app, just writing that on the sidewalk. And so as visitors or locals are walking along, they can see this. It's a quick attention grabber piece. Um, and then they can go and, and download the app. So really little things like that, they don't have to be costly. Um, you know, maybe just take a little bit of your time. It can be nice if you could get out of the office <laughs> um, and go and do that. So really great job with kind of thinking outside of the box of other things that you can do to market your tour. One thing that's happened a lot with this particular tour is somebody will send me an article and say, mm -hmm. oh look, you're in the news. And it's related to this, this this uh, tour, Highway of Legends, Carl. And so um, I wanted to know, how did you get the media's attention? And what, what, what things did you do in order to get them to actually write about you? So what we've done is take advantage of the state's resources, right? Because mm -hmm. we're a small county, we don't have a big budget. Uh, every chance we got to send out a press release on driving, on, uh, on driving tours, on things to do, and we took advantage of it. And our community also, we're lucky enough to have people in the community that are tourism professionals, and they took it upon themselves to say, all right, well, we're gonna go out there and, and, and sell our region as well. Uh, so the AAA magazine one that came from a, uh, a combination of both the Colorado Tourism Office and a local person that has a connection with, with AAA that managed to get that article written. Um, and generally building up the excitement about the tour and the way we built the tour was important as well because we worked with everyone that had time to talk to us to get them to you know, be on the tour, give information about the tour. Right. Uh, so people from around the community had, had buy-in before the tour even was launched. 
Right. So you have, you know, your local historian on the tour and when they say to their history class, maybe their history teacher or something, hey, all these students listen to it. Then they spread the word to their parents and then so it's, yeah. Word of mouth. Right. So it's Great. the more buy-in you can have on mm -hmm. your actual tour, mm -hmm. that's definitely going to help. Yeah. And I know that you did a launch event as well and created invitations for that. Again, that can just attract the press or, you know, again, word of mouth. What did you do last weekend? Oh, I went on this tour. We had, it was the launch event. Um, and then they can tell their friends about that as well. And then, Carl, I know that there have been some pieces on advertising. I know that you just mentioned you don't have a huge budget, but is there a way that you kind of prioritize um, certain places where you want to have specific advertising? Is that, you know, based on the state's recommendation or how do you go about that? So what we, we looked really for one thing in the local area. So a lot of our advertising was in the nearby city of Pueblo and nearby city of Colorado Springs. Uh, we did do one advertisement in Denver, but of course it's more expensive so we couldn't afford to really to buy into that market a lot. Mm -hmm. So we relied on social media and, and digital marketing for the farther flung areas, you know, getting into Texas and getting into the Denver area. And then also back, back that up with uh, people in Pueblo, a lot of which are, have roots in, in Wernfano County and have left, or into uh, Colorado Springs area. Uh, a lot of military families there. We advertise in the military papers. Um, we advertise in different people that have real niche markets that specialize in, so one like the Pueblo Pulp, they're focused, focused mainly on younger people, right? So uh, advertising in that paper uh, got us a niche of people that are right, oh, going on a road trip. So uh, that's a cool thing to do on the way to meet, meet to the Owl Wolf or something like that. Yeah. Uh, taking advantage of things like that is one of the big things that we're able to do. I'm curious, Carl, do you think this tour has like created a reason to come and do this and do this drive? Like, was this something that people came and did already? Or was this something that we sort of created a demand for this, this group? Well, a little bit of both, right? There are people that have taken, that have driven the Hollywood Legends many times that have told us that it added a new dynamic to the, taking the, the drive, right? You know, now all of a sudden we understand the heritage that, that's just hidden right beneath our, our feet. You know what I'm saying? That building that's sitting off the side of the road isn't just some random old church. It has a history that's tied to uh, families that have been here for a long time. Um, it makes the tour mean more. It makes the drive mean more. Um, particularly the locals that are trying to learn more about the area. It's uh, Our museums all open during the summer and a lot of people took the, took the drive in the wintertime, particularly locals, because they want to learn more of the area, and that was a great way. It's a, essentially a year-round museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, uh, when you, when, how do you get feedback from those visitors or locals or whoever's taking the tour? Is there some mechanism that you have for actually getting feedback from them um, about the tour? When we did the launch event, we did a survey along with that that got you know, great, great responses from people. Um, since then, it's mainly word of mouth. Um, because our highway is a loop, people tend to start and finish in the same place. Uh, so if someone gets from one of our, our business owners, or something like that, gets information and says, you know, go take the drive, uh, those people tend to come back later that evening and say, oh, wow, that was awesome. I really like learning about this. And also we've gotten a lot of feedback from locals. Uh, because our, our logo is on the tour, when you download it, people know that the tourism board did it and they can come up to us and say, oh wow, I really like this, I really like that. And also the same thing before, by having some buy-in on, on, the, on the beginning side, uh, people had points of reference to go back to and say, oh, I heard your voice on the tour. Mm -hmm. or, oh, that information had to come from you. Uh, and this is what I thought about it. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Um, so, just doing a time check here, um, we have kind of two last questions for you, Carl, and, you know, kind of going over everything that you've done, and you've done such a great job with all this marketing and with the production of your tour, um, what do you think had the most impact? 
I think that really the way we built the tour, talking to people and getting the community involved in the building of the tour made the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. um, because they were involved, people cared. Because they cared, they took a listen, they took the time. You know, yeah. folks that, you know, they have an iPhone, they barely know how to use it, are, you know, driving into this tour and saying, oh my God, this is so interesting. Show me how to use this. I want to go on it now. I want to see what how it came out. And that it just spiraled from there. Uh, and then as locals come and they they hear the they, they see the billboard or they get an ad and they talk to someone that's here that's you know uh, a waitress or a waiter or a shopkeeper and, and that just adds on to it. So it makes all the marketing that much more effective. Yeah. Yeah. And this is not the end for you. <laughs> As we were talking about the beginning of this call, um, you've got another grant, and tell us a little bit about what's coming next. So what's coming next, so the, it are three walking tours. So our community, uh, we have three primary tourist communities, Walsenburg, Levita, Kachara, and we're going to do walking tours of each one of those communities through a History Colorado grant. So that will hopefully get started in the next couple of months, um, once we have the okay to proceed and start to do start doing all the work. And hopefully by next April, May, we'll have three great tours for people to go out, walk around and experience the living history of these buildings that, that, that are around them now. So one of our big initiatives and what we've tried to do is encourage communities that are around us to also join on and create tours on travel stories. So we've encouraged uh, the other byways in the region and other downtown areas to create walking tours because people will see our tour and people taking our tour will see their tour and they'll be and they'll see that there's an ecosystem out here of taking travel story tours. Right. I think that's a really smart strategy. What we've done in lots of communities or what our goal is in lots of communities is to create sort of a skeleton, which you've done with the Highway of Legends, and then build off of that so that we can get people, so now they're driving into different communities, they're going around, but what's the reason to stop and get out and explore the town? Well, no, there's a walking tour there, mm -hmm. and that creates even more reason for them to get out, stop, maybe economic, you know, get a cup of yeah. coffee there, um, find out more about whatever it is, whatever your message is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a, a, a fun little, little uh, addition that you're adding on to. Yeah, we're excited yeah. to see how it comes out. Yep. Hello. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna wrap that piece up so we don't take up everybody's day. Yeah. So thanks again. That was really incredible to hear all about your process and to know that just you know it's a wonderful tour and it's great to see that it's getting all the attention it deserves. And so just to follow up here, um, something that I can do for everyone is to send a follow-up email um, and just including, you know, learning marketing best practices, especially for the summertime, um, how to market to your audience. Um, again, you know, like Carl mentioned, going and using your state's resources, your community's resources to learn about people that are coming to your area. And then obviously um, digital and physical marketing, especially word of mouth, you know, we really can't stress how important that is. So doing little events, little travel stories plugs, sending out newsletters, um, that's an easy way for people to share and send that to their family and friends as well. And then, so along with marketing, just a little reminder that Travel Stories also has other products that um, you can use. So our website plugin, um, what we can do is put this into your website. And so as people are trip planning or exploring on your website, they can go to a tab and see the Travel Stories tour that you have. And kind of explore that on their desktop. And so you can click here, just like taking a tour remotely on the app, um, but it's now on your desktop. And so they can see some of the photos, listen to some of the stories, um, and then they can go download the app. And then when they go to visit your area, they can actually take the tour on site and, and experience it that way. 
And also, you know, what Carl mentioned, we have a few other clients who are expanding their reach by adding to their tour or creating a new tour um, in that area. And so this is an example of the Devil's Tower area in um, Wyoming. And so it's just a great way, you know, people maybe have visited your area before and then they're coming back and they see that there are new sites along that tour route and can go um, explore that area even more and um, just interact with all of those great stories that you know so many of our clients have. And I'm going to speak a little bit to this. So this, this we started this Devil's Tower tour. This is one of the most visited sites in Wyoming mm -hmm. outside of like Yellowstone. And, yeah. um, but this is one of the most visited sites in Yellowstone. So it's, it's very popular. We created a walking tour around the most popular site. People are going to take that because they're there, you know, and people want to find out about it. But then what we did was we said, okay, what does this community actually want? And what they actually want is not just people to walk around the monument. They want them to come into their museums. They want them to drive along this route, know about their coffee shops. So we added on, um, and this is the approach to the walking tour. Mm -hmm. So there you get people not just taking the walking tour, but also exploring more into your community. From there, we're adding on even more so that basically anywhere you go in this county, you hear information about Devil's Tower. So you're going to Devil's Tower anyway. Right. Why don't you find out along the way about all this other cool stuff that you're just driving right by and not mm -hmm. getting out of your car to see and spend money and right. learn about. So that's, this is just um, one way that you can focus on the sites that people are actually, you know, they're there to see that. Mm -hmm. but create a need for them to go to other places that might not have as high a visitation. Yeah, yeah. Great, so expanding your reach review. Um, again, I mentioned this in the beginning, a quick, easy way is just adding promotion for your tour on your website. Um, again, I'm happy to resend website banners or give you some examples of what other clients have done on their website. Um, it's just a quick, easy, inexpensive way to get the word out. Um, like I said, I'll be sending a follow-up email with best practices, social media posts for the summer season, just easy templates that you can insert your tour name, destination, um, because I know that Social media can just take up a little bit more time than people think. And so we just want to make it as easy as possible, again, to get that word out so people who follow you can easily share and send that information to their family and friends. And then I'll also send information on digital marketing um, and then the other Travel Stories products that we mentioned. So if you have any questions on that, feel free to send an email back or we can hop on a quick phone call to cover those. And then lastly, you know, we can't stress it enough, local promotion. It was great hearing from Carl um, that that's kind of been the biggest impact for them. Word of mouth, physical materials, um, you know, any help that you need for that, we are here to support you. Um, we really take this as a partnership between Travel Stories and our tour sponsors, and we just want to continue that even after the tour is launched. So we are here to help you. We have resources, and we want to make sure that this is the most successful summer that we've ever had. So that is all that we have today. Does anyone have any questions? Or again, you know, we're happy to jump on a phone call after if things come up a little later. Carl, is there anything we missed? Mm. I don't think so. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well done, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank again. you. Well, thank you for sharing your experience. And we really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll we'll be sending this around. We're recording it, so. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a follow up of this recording and the documents. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and we will be in touch. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Au revoir. <laughs> Bye.